Welcome to Inside Health. I'm Amadara Mills. In this video series, we explore various departments, units, and the services of the Tobago Regional Health Authority, the TRHA. We'll be taking you behind the scenes to show you how they contribute to the various healthcare services provided to you, our people. In this episode, we're exploring the Biomedical Engineering Department. It plays a pivotal role in the management of our medical equipment at the Scarborough General Hospital as well as our health centers. So come along with us as we take you through the paces of this department. have here this morning Mr. Jefferson Guy, Manager of the Biomedical Engineering Department. Mr. Guy, thanks for inviting us to see how the, uh, the, this department is run and operated. But before we go into the nitty gritty of it, people may not know what is the Biomedical Department responsible for. Can you give us an idea of what you all are responsible for? Um, so the Biomedical Engineering Department is basically they're responsible for the management of all medical equipment at the hospital. Well, I should say within the TRHA. So that includes the Scarborough General Hospital as well as the health centers. The management of the equipment lasts throughout the entire lifetime of that piece of equipment. So from the initial stages where the doctors will ask for a particular type of technology and so that they can be able to accomplish a particular service, we will look at what technologies are available out there and we will discuss with them the specifications that they would need from the equipment. Um, so we play an important role as a part of the procurement process for the pieces of equipment. Um, once equipment is purchased, we assist the engineers from the suppliers in training the staff, training our in-house staff as well too because we have to play a role in the maintenance. Um, and then we would uh, um, uh, ensure that the equipment comes here safely, it is working, it is functional. Um, throughout the life of the machine, we will be managing the maintenance, uh, ensuring that the corrective maintenance is done on time, as well as the preventive maintenance, uh, which is maintenance before it breaks down. And uh, when the machine can no longer repair, well, be repaired, we go through the decommissioning process, and uh, which is a part of the legal process to remove equipment from uh, a public uh, facility. It's a lot of equipment, and it's a lot of key critical areas that we have to cover, um, including medical imaging, hemodialysis, the lab, uh, 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 those areas. So we have, we try to have at least two technicians assigned to these critical areas, so we have redundancy and we have backup in case somebody becomes ill and it also allows for um, exchange of, of knowledge and information. So today you may be in one particular area, but you, sorry, you may cover not just one critical area, but two, multiple critical areas. One of the critical aspects of, of having an in-house biomedical engineering department is having staff available to respond when you have critical issues. So in the past, we would have had to uh, bring somebody across from Trinidad right and obviously you can see that that being a problem because if you need a machine now you, we are in the business of saving lives right and uh, if you have a machine that is breaking down or malfunctioning then you can't wait until somebody comes from Trinidad you need somebody on the ground to be able to respond to that um, we would obviously be able to save the organization a lot of money simply because um, the cost to bring somebody here is, is a lot and um, it adds up. Uh, the, the good thing of having an in-house staff as well too is that you are able to spend time repairing the equipment. We, we go through the procurement process on a regular basis, right? So we have uh, plans to outfit some brand new equipment for the lab. We also have plans to uh, change some critical equipment within the diocese area as well too. Um, because the idea is that we want to be able to serve more of the population and to be able to do that efficiently. Um, 
right now on the ground, what we have is the lab equipment, right? And we have uh, various machines, which include uh, chemistry, biochemistry, um, and then you have hematology as well too. What we did in the past is we, we ensure that there were redundancies within the facility, within the organization. Uh, we are very uncomfortable with the fact that we have one equipment within a particular area. So we spent a lot of time ensuring that um, even in the, the meetings, meetings we had recently, we were looking at uh, the health centers to ensure that the health centers as well to have redundancy. Um, so that if a machine breaks down, the nurses can quickly get on with the business of the day. They can continue to continually, they can continue, sorry, to be able to um, offer service to our patients without that disruption because a machine goes down. And of course, we will get there as soon as we can and we'll be able to repair the machine. So that is kind of the, the kind of thought process that come out of our meetings in, to, in order to ensure that the clinicians always have functional equipment. The Biomedical Engineering Department keeps more than 150 machines running throughout Tobago's hospital and health centers. They include ultrasound machines, ventilators, incubators, ECG machines, and physiotherapy equipment. Maintenance of those machines is vital. The department's technicians ensure the equipment is regularly checked for optimal performance. How often do you have to, are you scheduled to um, ensure that it's working? Is there a maintenance schedule where you come every week, every two weeks or so? No, to change particular um, parts on it, you, you might do it like changing filters like these and we might do it on a three months basis but what we do we do a routine check before the operator start week i come every morning and do a routine check to make sure all systems are on go before the the day's proceeding right um that's a route that is how we operate on a routine check so what we call preventative maintenance so we might come and see we might be having a leak you might having a leak we know like the the temperature blow valve want to change and then you know we got to change it before the, we start the proceeding. So that is our main role in the institution. Do you like what you do? Tell us, um, you know, why do you like ensure we're well, looking after the equipment at the hospital as well as the health centers? Well, um, I love what I'm doing, right? Um, I started as an electrician and from time as time goes on, I'm 21 years now working in the institution. And um, I gravitated from being an electrician to now because electrical field is a wide field. So um, then we come to doing repairs on um, medical e equipment. It's a passion for me. My parents, my children, my family could end up here. And once these are not working, you have to put off surgery, you have to put off dressing, and it affects the entire institution. Because if you go, to the, the health centers on a Monday, Wednesday and Thursday where they do dressing on patients. If the, uh, we have sterilizers out, smaller sterilizer in the, all the districts, and even the hospital they're doing dressing for any wound. And these are not operating, your entire system shut down. So this is like the lifeline at the hospital. Because if this is done for a couple of days or a day, any of these, there's a backup in surgery because it cannot do surgeries. Um, tell me, you indicated you're also responsible for the equipment at the health centers, and we have a lot of health centers, 17 of them. All right, tell us about your role there. How do you operate in ensuring that things are kept, you know, optimum effective standard? Well, also, um, and I do a bi, a bi weekly checks on all the equipment. We drive on all points of to Tobago to all the existing health center. You see, just now. I just told you, let's go to a health center, just call and say they scale it down. It's my duty to go out there. Right? So, um, we are traveling officers. And, and as you say, you have to like what you do. Right? And it, it's not a problem because it's healthcare you deliver. How do you see your department or what you do contributing to ensuring that there's quality health care provided to Tobagonians, whether it's the medical staff who are using the equipment or the patients who you know are the end users? Well, our core responsibility as biomed is preventive and corrective maintenance, which 
assist in keeping the machinery uh, in optimal working operation. That in itself will definitely um, help to maintain the quality of a service provided. If you have equipment you can depend on, then definitely, you know, that's a, that's a plus for the service um, provided by, the, by us and eventually the RG. The Biomedical Engineering Department also has responsibility at the Scarborough Health Center. And we're here with Mr. Kelvin Roberts, a bioengineering technician one. Mr. Roberts, tell us some of your responsibilities here at the health center. Well, basically we, uh take care of the hemodialysis machines, right, and, um, and also responsible for dental as well, right, but basically Mr. Allen and I provide a service for our um, dialysis patients, right, by simply we um, fix and maintain all the hemodialysis machines plus the water system as well. All right. So tell me now here, what is going on? Is it that you're fixing this machine or is it that you're just doing some calibration or maintenance work on it? Um, this is just a simple um, calibration on this machine. Um, sometimes what does happen if you had the machine just sit down in the department and really do nothing. Sometimes, you know, just like from day to day, we switch the machines. So these are basically our backup machines. So if anything goes wrong on the floor, you could actually just switch and you know so we wouldn't slow down the process. Me and Mr. Allen we take pride in our work to make sure that every dialysis patient is you know is comfortable right and um, we always go like we say beyond our call to make sure that you know everything is really really up to standard. What do you think about you know just overall the importance of having our very own biomedical engineering department to service the hospital as well as the health centers? Um, it is so important because um, before we'd have to wait, if these machines give us trouble, we'll have to wait on somebody sometimes to fly in from the United States, right? But um, we go to do factory training where we are trained on the machine at the factory, hands-on. And even if the company in the States doesn't come down, somebody from Trinidad, and then sometimes they don't have flight. So the people of Tobago are even served better with biomed on board so that if we have a problem in the night, anytime we are on call, we could serve. Most of the times we have to come out here, sometimes two o'clock in the morning, we're leaving here to go home. Right? We come out, we make sure that the system runs properly. We have a water system. We have to make sure that the water, we have water from um, the Water and Sewage Authority and we purify the water so that when the patient comes, like on a Saturday night, the patient comes here at one o'clock in the morning on a holiday. So. We come out before the patient, make sure everything is fine so that the patient can get treatment and go home. It is a team effort and uh, the department and the technicians and the, even the administrative um, officer, they play each of them, all, we all play a vital role in uh, um, how the department runs. Uh, we are always discussing with the clinicians, how can we do better? What is that you need to do your job better? Um, and uh, as a profession, you know, you bounce ideas off of one another until you kind of find a middle ground. Because yeah? you have to balance, obviously, expectations to cost. Because we are a public institution, we're not private, we don't earn money. But I can tell you um, from, you know, previous interactions with the clinicians and the strategic level, we, we all have uh, Tobago at heart. And uh, we, we tend to push to get the best that we can, um, despite the cost, um, uh, and they, they make, will make great sacrifices to ensure that the, the population has the best technology here. Uh, if you go anywhere in the world, um, we have equipment that is on par or even better than a lot of the facilities abroad.